Okay. We're going to start level three of conversational Korean grammar. We've gone all the way from level one all the way to where we are in level three, which is actually a lot of content. It's like, I don't know, maybe 20 or 30 grammar forms. So we've covered all of this and we're going to start level three. If you want to catch up on previous live streams, I do have most of them up on YouTube, so you can go back and watch those. Today, we're going to be looking at er de, er de in level three. And if we have time, maybe we'll do um myon so as well. What books are these? This is the book Conversational Korean Grammar, which I helped write alongside my counterpart, Chelsea. Uh, we're both non-native speakers, but... We've both been learning Korean for a long time. Between the two of us, it's been 18 years that we've been learning Korean. Um, and we put this book together using all our knowledge, plus the knowledge of native Korean people as well. We're pretty proud of it. We think it's pretty a pretty great book. Um, but you can judge that for yourself, I suppose. Okay, so we're going to start level three. It's very exciting. The very first chapter in level three is er de. Er de or also noun de. Uh, you might be familiar with this grammar form, but we're going to practice it, see some example sentences, and see some common usages of de. Um, also, a quick note, you see we have a vocab page here uh, for sort of the main vocab for level three. And we actually just uh, published, just made a bunch of Quizlet flashcards. So if you want to practice this vocab, uh, you can go to Quizlet and search up Conversational Korean Grammar. You should be able to find Quizlet decks for these vocab words that you can practice if you would like. Up to you, you don't have to, but that's an option. Totally free as well, there's no charge. Okay, so this grammar form is er, or lul, or er, de, and noun de. It's for talking about the times that you do things. Do things. Times is the operative word. Actually, this te by itself literally actually means time. So when you use this grammar form in a sentence, you're talking about the times that you've been um, using them, doing something. Sunshine, I've been doing them. It's great. Yay, I'm so glad. Um, yeah, cool. So we have an example sentence. And let's zoom in a little bit so you guys can see it a little bit better. We have an example sentence. 저녁을 먹을 때 가족이랑 같이 이야기해요. Okay, so 저녁을 먹을 때. This is our 을 때 right here. And it's being attached to the verb 먹다. 먹다 means to eat. So this means when I eat or when we eat. When we 먹다. 먹을 때, when we eat. And the thing that we are eating is chonyok. Does anyone, uh, I guess you can see the translation here. Chonyok is dinner. Chonyok er mogul te. So when I eat dinner, or so when some subject eats dinner, kajok irang kachi. Kajok. Kajok is family. Kajok is family. And this irang means with. You can put irang on nouns to mean with that noun. So kajokiran is kajokiran is with my family. Kachi literally means together, but it's very commonly used with this irang form as well to say like together with my family. My family and I together iagiheo. Iagiheo is to chat. So chonyogu mogu te kajokiran kachi iagiheo. Uh, my family and I chat when we eat dinner. And again, the operative thing we're looking at today is this when part. When we eat dinner. dinner. That's what we're going to learn about today in this live stream. Okay. So the first thing we need to practice is how do we conjugate it? So, te <clears throat> is attached to verbs to mean when you do that verb. It can be attached to descriptive verbs and action verbs. If the verb ends in a consonant sound, if it has a patim, 
you attach er te. You attach er te. So, for example, mokta becomes mogur te. Just like we had in the sentence. Because mokta ends on a consonant sound. This kirk at the bottom is a consonant sound. You attach er te to the end. Pata becomes pader te. Again, because pata ends on a pachim and a final consonant sound, so it becomes padal te. Pata means to receive or to get. So padal te means when I get something or when I receive something. And lastly, we have titta. Now, titta is an irregular verb. That's what this exclamation point, point means. It's an irregular verb, so you have to be a little bit careful when you conjugate it. <clears throat> but it becomes te. This tiga at the bottom changes to a le. And that's what happens with these irregular tiga irregular verbs. So it becomes te, And it means when subject listens. Tita means to listen. Oh, that gave some things away. Um, so that's if it ends on a consonant sound. What if it ends on a vowel sound? In that case, you attach lil underneath the previous con the previous syllable and then add there. And by the way, you should use a little space. That's the most correct way to do it. You might see people will shorten it and like just write it all together in one word. Um, it's not like as correct as, you know, official rules say, but it's very common to do that as well. But for learners, I recommend you always put a little space between your verb and there. Okay. <clears throat> When you mentioned the word irang, how would you add it to friend? Sure. So irang, so the word for chingu, or word for friend is chingu, and you attach rang or irang, depending on it ends on a vowel or a consonant sound. So chingu ends on a vowel sound, so it becomes chingu rang. Chingu rang means with my friend. And remember, if you want to say with my friend's plural, you can use the plural marker, chingu Der, but now it ends on a consonant sound, right? So it becomes der irang. So that's with my friend, and this is with my friends. Yeah, sure. Okay, so tada. Tada, does anyone know what this verb means? Tada. Um, to do with kind of movement, I guess. Kind of. Anyone knows what tada? Ah, I am Vincent. Yes, tada means to ride. So you use that verb with things like buses and bicycles and planes and boats and things like that. Perfect. Yeah. And it ends on a vowel sound. So this liu goes underneath the ta and it becomes tal tal te. Tal te. Oh my. my pronunciation on these things is uh, not perfect, um, but notice that there is a different spelling and there is a different pronunciation, um, but I'm not a native speaker. Okay, what about this next one? Modu da also ends on a vowel sound. So the lil goes underneath the bottom syllable or the bottom, um, at the bottom of the syllable and it becomes modu te. Does anyone know what modu da means in Korean. Does anyone know what this verb means? Moruda. It's a very useful one to know. <clears throat> Moruda. Not to know. Pink candy. Perfect. Yeah. Moruda is the verb to not know something. In English, it's kind of strange that we don't have a, a word for this, right? We have knowing and then we have not knowing, but and in Korean, they have their own verb, for, like to not know something, and it's moruda. Moruda is to not know. So morute means when I don't know something, or when she doesn't know something, something like that. And the last one here, we have himduda. Himduda. What about this verb? Does anyone know what this verb means in Korean? Himduda. <clears throat> it's more efficient. So true. There are so many ways that Korean, I think, is a little bit easier than English. Pink candy. Yeah, perfect. To be difficult. Himdilda is to be difficult or hard. So, 
Uh, oh, but this is a little bit of a tricky one um, because it ends in a liu. When it ends on a liu already, you don't need to attach another er. It just becomes him de te. You don't have to say him de de te. That's people will probably understand you, but this is the correct way to do it. It's just him de te. When it's hard, when it's difficult. Okay. So now that we've looked at how to sort of conjugate these onto verbs, let's see some examples of how it's used in a sentence. What book is this? This book is Conversational Korean Grammar. This is the cover. Okay. So what about this first sentence? Him del te. Shioyo. Shioyo. So, um, is it a spelling mistake? She wore What's the difference between himdulda and oryopta? Um, they're pretty similar, to be honest. Himdulda is used a lot, um, for like f like physically hard like if you're going on like on a difficult hike um i think himdada is used more than oryopta but they're really very interchangeable a lot of the time <clears throat> okay yeah himdada means strength yeah so like things that can be physically challenging uh, are more likely to use himdada because like literally it's like wearing out your strength um it's kind of like himdada okay himdada shiwo when it's hard, I take a break. Himjote. When it's hard, I rest. Okay, what about this next one? Tanoder motor te chajabaya. Okay, so what about this first word? Tano. Does anyone know what tano means in Korean? I usually say himjoleo when I'm having a hard time emotionally, but audio when I'm having a hard time. Yeah, sure. Um, seven always with you. Yes, tano means word. Tano means word. So tano de modder te. When I don't know, don't know a word, a tano, I chajabayo. Chajabayo. What about this? Chajabayo means to look up. So if you're like searching on the internet or something like that, that's like chajabayo. You're like looking something up. Or finding something out. So, or searching, yeah. So, tanoru modu te chajabayo. When I don't know a word, I look it up. Or I search for it. You know, maybe with a dictionary or something like that. When I don't know a word, I look it up. What about this next one? Basuru tarte umaku tiroyo. Basu. This is probably pretty straightforward to understand. This is bus. Basuru Tarte. Uh, and we had this one before. Tada, we had that up here, is to ride. So, basuru tarte. When I ride the bus, umaku tiroyo. Shrewens, yes, perfect. Umak is music and tiroyo is to listen. So, umaku tiroyo is I listen to music when I ride the bus. When I ride the bus, I listen to music. And you can change these things around as much as you want, you know. If you want to say something else when you ride the bus, you can just put anything after this. You know, when I read the, ride the bus, I read a book. Or when I ride the bus, I don't know, um, anything you like. I eat bread, I don't know. Whatever it is you, that you do when you ride the bus, you can just put it after here. And that's how this grammar form works. You use this to say when you do some action. And then you describe what it is that you do when you do this first action. You do some other action as well. Okay, um, let's look at um, let's look at this one as well for the last one. Let's do this one. Tonin nomu paperte stresser padai. This is a very true expression, certainly for all of us, I believe. Tonin means me. What about nomu? Nomu also, uh, I'll just tell you, this one means to be a lot or like too much. But what about this? 
Does anyone know what the original verb is here? Papper te. Does anyone know what's going on here? There's a verb that's been used with er te. Does anyone recognize it? Anyone can pull apart what the original verb was? Busy, yes, valacrom. Papperda is to be busy. <laughs> I meant busy, yeah. <laughs> Normal papperte is therefore when I'm too busy, when I've got too much going on, when there's too much stuff happening in my life. Normal papperte. Stresser padaya. Stresser is stress. Stresser, stresser. Pata. Pata is to receive. So when I'm too busy, when there's too much, when life's hectic, when so, like stuff's going on, I get stressed or I get stressed out. Okay. <clears throat> when I'm too busy, I get stressed. And if you want to look at some more examples, you can also go back and uh, check out the book yourself as well. I didn't know pata could be used that way. Yeah, it's a very common use for pata actually to say you you get you get stressed. Stressed or pata is a pretty common way to use it. It's not just for you know receiving packages and things like that. You can also use it for uh, words like stress. Okay, what about noun? So this is all talking about verbs, right? We looked at action verbs and we looked at descriptive verbs, but you can also use te with nouns. And it's very easy to do so. Just after the noun, you put a space and then you put te. Again, sometimes you might see it all combined into one word, but I recommend to you as a learner to always use a little space there because <clears throat> that is technically the sort of proper grammar way to do it is to use a space. Um, so here we have a uh, noun here, bangak. Bangak is sort of vacation. Pangak is vacation or, you know, break, a break time from work or school. Pangak. And so Pangak te, when you use put te after it, is like during vacation or, you know, when I'm on vacation. Pangak te, when I'm on vacation, when I'm on break. Okay. Let's see some other examples. What about this word? Shihom. Does anyone know what shihom means in Korean? Shihom. <clears throat> exam. I am Vince. Yes. Shihom means exam or test. So shihom te means during the exam or like during exam times as well. Yeah, exam or test. What about jomshim? What does jomshim mean in Korean? Jomshim. It's a good word to know. Lunch. Yes, perfect. Jomshim means lunch. So jomshim te means during lunch or when I have lunch. So let's look at some a couple of examples for using te with nouns. Shihom te tosogwane jaju kayo. What is this word, tosogwan? Anyone know what tosogwan is? <clears throat> um, yeah, shiwoyo is actually a typo, I need to fix that. Shiwoyo it should be. Um, library, yes, tosogwan is a library. Tosogwane jaju kayo. Tosogwane jaju kayo. Um, <laughs> Jaju. Uh, jaju. So Tosogon is a library. Library. Jaju. What does Jaju mean in Korean? Rian. Yes. Perfect. You got that uh, just right. But uh, for everyone else watching, does anyone know what Jaju means? Often. Yeah. Perfect. So, Shihom Te. During exams, library to the library. I often go. Kayo means to go. During exams, I often go to the library. During exam time, I often go to the library. And let's do this next one as well. 
방학 때 해변에서 자주 수영해요. So it's a sort of a similar layout to the previous one, but we have some new, vo new vocabulary. 방학 때 we had on the previous page. Anyone remember what 방학 means? We just had it before, but uh, see if you can remember what 방학 meant um, for this sentence as well. 방학. <clears throat> Vacation, Zessi out, perfect. Banghak means vacation. So banghak te means during vacation. Hebion eso. Jaju suyong heo. Hebion. What is a hebion? Or where is a hebion? It is a place. Does anyone know what hebion is? This book is called. Oh, not this, not this one. This book is called this one. Conversational Korean Grammar. Pull close. Very, very close. That's a very good guess, given the verb. Um, where's another place that you can do that verb? <laughs> Pool place. Also close. Um, yeah. <laughs> beach. Chewy, yeah. Hebion is a beach. It's uh, the, specifically the locations at the beach where you go swimming. So not just like the general coastline or just anywhere along the coast. Specifically at a place where people go to swim is a hebion. Hebioneso. So during vacation at the beach, Jaju Suyongheo. And Suyongheo, uh, like Pink Candy was saying, means to swim. So during vacation or during my break, I often swim at the beach. This eso is like the at part of thing. At the beach. At this location. I'm doing some action. The action that you're doing is swimming. The location you're doing it at is the habion, at the beach. Okay. So now let's look at the past and future tense briefly. So all the conjugations we've seen so far have just been using the simple present tense. But it's also very common to use this form in the past tense. Just talk about things you did in the past or things you used to do in the past. So, for example, 한국에 살았을 때 영어를 가르쳤어요. So this actually might apply to a lot of people, uh, possibly. 한국에 살았을 때. So let's look at this first part first. Does anyone recognize this verb? 살다. Does anyone know what that verb means? 한국에 살다. Salda. <clears throat> live. Seven always with you. Yeah. Salda means to live. And Hanguge is in Korea. Hanguk is Korea. And this air particle is kind of like the in part. In Korea, live. But it's not just live, right? We have this past tense form of urte. Pink candy. Yeah, perfect. Um, so when it's conjugated into the past tense, you add at osur te. And depending on what the final uh, sound of the verb is, you either attach at or ot to the verb. So if it was, this is the same as when you're conjugating into present tense. So like, kada becomes kaso yo, right? So when you're using ur te, it just becomes kas. Er, te, like mokta becomes mogos or yo, right? That's the past tense conjugation. So to do the past tense form of er, te, mogos, er, te. So it's still the same er, te, you're just also sticking the past tense in there as well. So hanguge sarasu te, when I lived in Korea, Yongo er karuchasso. This is English yongo, and karuchida is to teach. That's the dictionary form. Karuchida is the dictionary form, and chasso is the past tense conjugation. So we're using past tense here. When I lived in Korea in the past, at that time in the past, I taught English. 
Okay. What about this next one? We'll do this next one as well. Taihakyo-e tanyosuru te hangogoru kombu hessoyo. Can you explain the sentence structure? Uh, sure. Let's break it down a little bit more. So we've got, let's write it out. Okay, so first we have Korea. We've got two clauses, first of all. We've got two clauses. We have a first clause here, and we have a second clause here. And I know this because of the grammar that's going on, because of this erte. This erte is a, sent, is a uh, grammar form used to connect clauses together. And it means when. So this first clause is talking about when some action happens, and the second clause is talking about um, the action that was do done at that time. So the first clause here, Hanguk is Korea, and then we have the time particle, sort of the, it, I'm just going to say this means in. So in Korea, Sarda is from the verb Sarda to live. This is where the Sar comes from. Now we have this at is past tense. This is the past tense. And now we have o te, which is the grammar form that we are learning in this chapter. Oh, that looks like the same color. Oh, well. This means when. So when, in the past, when lived in Korea, Yongo. Yongo means English. And then this ler is the uh, object particle. It's the object particle because karuchida is an action verb. It's an action that you perform on some object. English is the object that you taught. So you use the object particle. And then we have chosoyo, which again is the past tense. Just like this at here. This at and this also are the same essential form, past tense, just in two different places. When I lived in Korea, I taught English. If you do need to practice some of these other forms, feel free to, to go back and practice those um, in your own time as well. It's a very useful thing to know about past tense and also about this air particle as well. You can do lessons on those separately as well. Okay. So this next one here, we have teakyo-e tanyosurte hangokoro kombu eso. Thank you. So it's subject, verb, then the rest. Um, yes, that that happens within both clauses. Um, so like you have subject, object, verb in this first clause, and you have subject, object, verb in this second clause. We have a verb here and a verb here. We've got an object here, etc. Jilmuni so. Yeah, sure. Go ahead. What's your question? <clears throat> yeah so the subject object verb um, applies in both clauses and remember that korean doesn't need subjects there's no subject necessarily stated in the second clause but you know that it's you because say i say chon in here i'm establishing that i'm talking about myself <laughs> if i wanted to add chon in that sentence um yeah that's an excellent question so um, you can do either, honestly. You can start with chon in here and you can say chon in. Hangoge sarasul te yongoro karuchoso. And you, then that's fine as well. You're saying, you know, as for me, when I lived in Korea, I taught English. But you could also put it here as well and that's fine. You could say hangoge sarasul te chon in yongoro karuchoso. That's fine as well. Um, it's just whatever you prefer or whatever comes in the moment to you. Um, it's, you don't need either. You can leave it out if it's clear that you're talking about yourself. But if you want to include a chonin, yeah, you can use it either here or here. Um, those are probably the two most natural places to put it. Honestly, you can put chonin anywhere. You could even say hangul ge chonin sarasul te. You could say that if you want. 
Um, it's not quite as natural like to put it in the middle, um, but you can do it. Everyone would understand you. Um, everyone would know what you're talking about. <clears throat> uh, when is class? I have, I do live streams usually on, um, usually twice a week. So usually once during the week and once on the weekend. Um, so usually either Wednesday or Thursday and usually either Saturday or Sunday. Yeah. <laughs> That's a relief. Yeah. <laughs> you don't have to worry too much about where to put Chon in. Um, you can really put it anywhere. The nice thing about Korean is that the sentence structure is much more loose than English. In English, has we have a very rigid sentence structure. We have to follow a certain pattern, and if we don't, things very quickly get very strange or just straight out, you know, wrong. You can't like move words around. But Korean, you can. Um, Korean, you can move things around very easily. And it, the sentence doesn't change too much um, because of things like particles uh, that happen in Korean that we don't have in English. Um, need to get this book very helpful. Yeah, thank you. How to get noticed if you have a live. Uh, you can follow us, follow us on, um, follow our profile. You can also subscribe. If you want to subscribe to our live stream, you'll get notified as well. And uh, But that you have to pay, I believe, if you subscribe. Um, because we actually get paid from TikTok for subscribers. I think we're getting like $6 a month or something from a subscriber. Um, how do you pronounce a little er after a word in a natural way? How to make it smooth, sound smooth together? Uh, that's a good question. So there is actually some rules about that with um, pronunciation. And I can tell you briefly about it. Uh, it's a very easy way to improve your pronunciation in Korean. So let's, for example, have some example words. Saram. Saram means person. And say you put a particle after it, it becomes er because uh, it ends on a consonant sound. So you have saram er. Now, a very easy way to improve your pronunciation is to not say it as two different words. So you don't say saram er. You don't put a little break in it. What you do is this pachin, this bottom consonant, glides up and takes the place of here. So when you're speaking, only when you're speaking, it becomes sa. Oh, I don't have space. Sa ra mo. <clears throat> that is the way to pronounce this word because of this sliding consonant. Thank you. Um, so let's look at some other examples. What is, what's a good one? Um, like, for example, when you're pronouncing mogur, like mogur te. Again, we have a consonant on the bottom and this consonant moves up here. And just when you're, when you're speaking, the consonant moves up here and it's pronounced mo gur there if you say it like that your pronunciation will sound much more natural and this book is called conversational korean grammar um and it's the true for all particles too not just the object particle like for example the topic particle um i don't know mi guk un so mi guk is america mi guk un but instead of saying mi guk un, you don't say it like that. I mean, you can say mi guk un, people will understand you, but it's more natural to say mi gu gun. Mi gu gun. Like this. Because this giuk on the bottom moves up here and takes the place of the nian. Yeah. Okay. Anyway gotten a little bit sidetracked here, but I love all the questions. It's really fun to have questions and uh, it's nice to work on these things together. Um, but we were looking at some of these questions, some of these things back here. We were looking at translating this sentence. <clears throat> we were looking at translating. So, what is this word here? Tehakyo. Do anyone know this word? Tehakyo. Uh, 
University. Perfect. Yeah, seven always with you. Teakyo means university or college. As a British English speaker, I would say university. If you're in the US, you would probably say college. But teakyo, college, university. Teakyo e hanyo te. So this is actually the verb tanida. Does anyone know what this verb means? This is where this comes from. Tanyo te is from the verb tanida. Does anyone recognize it or know what this means? Attend. I'm your Mila. Perfect. This means to attend. Somewhere that you go regularly. Tanida. You are tanida, a place. So, this is the past tense. So, when I attended, when I attended college, when I attended college, I did something. What did I do? Hangugoder kombueso. This you guys probably know, right? You probably recognize this, this sentence here. What does hangugoder kombueso mean? <clears throat> study. Yes, kombuhada means to study. And this is the past tense. King Raffin, learn Korean. Perfect. Yeah. Once upon a Kiwi. Perfect. I studied Korean. Kombuhesoyo is the past tense of study. Hangugoro is the language of Korean. So when I attended college, I studied Korean. Maybe that applies to you if you're lucky enough to have studied Korean at university. Question. What's the difference between otoke and otoke? Uh, good question. Let me just write those down. So... They are very similar looking words, very very similar sounding words, but they are slightly different. This one means like, OMG, kind of. It's like, oh my God, what am I going to do? What's going on? Um, oh my goodness, this is otoke. This one means how. So... When you're making an exclamation about a situation like, oh my God, you would be using this. But if you're saying a sentence, you know, like, um, if you're literally saying like, how do you go to school or anything with those questions, how did you learn Korean? Um, those sorts of things, you would use this one. So very similar looking sounding words, but two different purposes. Hopefully that answers your question. <laughs> yeah, sure. Um, how do you say, oh my gosh, how? I mean, <laughs> you would just say, otoke. Um, you don't have to translate it. Translating literally like that is tricky between languages. Um, there'd be other ways you that you would say that. I mean, you could say like, oh my gosh. Um, uh, no, it's, it's hard because... Uh, you're being tricky on purpose. Um, okay. Moving on. What have we got here? We've got... Um, let's do one more accent, one more sentence using... Um, I thought I heard Tanyo, but it's a Tanyo Oseo. Ah, Tanyo Oseo. Yeah. Please come again kind of thing. Please come back. Um, mm-hmm. It's funny with those moments you realize you've actually picked up words... Um, sort of naturally. It's kind of fun. Let's um, look at this one here. Let's look at this one. 한국에서 여행했을 때 정말 좋은 시간을 보냈어요. This is a uh, a long... Oh, why did 탄이다 become 탄요? Yeah, it's the, pres it's the conjugation. Um, 탄이다 becomes 탄요요 and it becomes Ta nyo soyo and ta nyo sir te. Sorry for my terrible handwriting. But Hanugogeso yo hang is te. Tong ma chon shigana ponisayo. This is the longest sentence that we have here, so let's have a look at it. Hanugogeso yo hang is te. What is this yo hang hada? What does yo hang hada mean in Korean? Yohang hada. A trip, yeah. Yohang hada is to travel. It's to go on a trip. I'd go on a vacation. 
And specifically, we're using the air saw particle because we're doing the action of traveling in a place. And that place is in Hanguk, in Korea. So in Korea, traveling did, when I traveled in Korea, this asurte or asurte is the past tense form of yohenghata with this when form. So when I traveled in Korea, Chongmar Chon Shiganer Ponesso. Chongmar. Chongmar means very. Does anyone know what this word is here? Shigan. Anyone recognize the word Shigan? <clears throat> Shigan. Time. Yeah, perfect. Shigan means time. And now Chon. Chon comes from the verb chota. What does this verb mean in Korean? Does anyone know what this word? Good, yeah. But this is the dictionary form of chota. If you want to describe something as good, like a good cake or a good friend, you have to turn it into its adjective form. Which is this one, ton. Ton is good as an adjective. And this is what we have here. We have ton shigan, literally a good time. Chong ma chon shigan is a very good time. The words actually all line up perfectly, which is rare in Korean, but there we go. Um, we're having a little uh, good time here. Chong ma chon shigan, a very good time. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Have a good day. Um, this book is called Conversational Korean Grammar. And then there's a little expression that's very useful in Korean. Shigana Now, um, literally, Shigana Ponesoyo means to send time, literally. This verb poneda means to send, but you'd usually you'd translate it to have a good time. Um, yeah, or to spend a good time. So it's very commonly used with this ponesoy, I think. She's going to ponesoy means uh, a very good time was had or was spent. So when I traveled in Korea, I had a really good time. Right? In Korea, when I traveled, a really good time was, was spent. What a handy verb. I know. It's so versatile, right? Um, okay. So that's past tense. When you want to use erte with the past tense, you just conjugate that middle that middle bit with the past tense marker to make it the past tense. Talk about when you did something in the past. What's the difference between tueda and talida? Um, I am not sure. I know they both mean to run, but I would, would need a native speaker to clarify any differences. I'm not sure. Um, okay, future tense. So what about, we looked at the past tense. What about the future tense? We, let's look at this first one. 한국에 살때 한국어를 공부할 거예요. Okay, so what are we saying here? We have two clauses again. We have 살때. Um, oh, first of all, what I want to say first is that a very common and useful feature in Korean is that most of the time you can just put the tense on the final verb. You can just put the tense on the final verb. This thing is just the regular form, right? It's out there. And even though this is in the future tense, you don't have to change this into some future tense. You can just use it like this. And this is the same for basically all sentences in Korean. The general tense of the sentence, the overall tense of the, te of the sentence, is carried by the final verb. Now, there are situations where both are, you know, this is the past tense and this is the past tense, etc. And there are some potential little differences between whether or not you 
conjugate the middle, but it's too complicated to go into right now. Uh, we do have a chapter on it in this book that you can read if you want to study why all that kind of happens, but I'm not going to go into it right now. Just know that when you're writing or forming sentences in Korean, the overall tense of the sentence is predominantly carried by the final verb. This verb in the middle is not as important when it comes to tense. Okay, so 한국에 살 때, what does this mean? 한국에 살 때 means when, um, actually before I do that, does anyone know what this first part is? 한국에 살 때, just this part. Can anyone translate that into English? 한국에 살 때. When I live in Korea, pink candy, beautiful, amazing, perfect. When this 살다 is the verb to live, and remember that 살다, because it ends on a, a, an allele already, it, you just stick 때 after it. Yeah live. This is confusing because um, 살다 becomes 살 때, and we also have a verb 사다. 사다 means to buy, but 살다 also becomes 살 때 when you conjugate it because it ends on a vowel sound and then you stick that on the end. So these two different verbs, to live and to buy, both become 살 때, uh, unfortunately. And then you have to know from context what is going on. So here we know it's live, right? Because you wouldn't, you know, buy to Korea or anything that's confusing. Um, so here we know it's to live. But just know that sada also conjugates to the same form. It also becomes sate. That's why context is key. Yeah, exactly. That's exactly right. Context is key um, to understanding anything in any language. You have to know the context. So, 한국에 살 때, when I lived, or when I live in Korea, 한국어를 공부할 거예요. So, this is the future tense. So, 한국어 is Korean. And this is will in the future. So, when I live in Korea, I will study Korean. When I go to Korea in the future, I'm going to study Korean. I will study Korean. Okay, so I'm not going to go into the other sentences here. Um, you can go back and look at those as well if you like. Just some other examples of ways that you can use erte with the future tense. Okay, I want to talk about this a little bit. A very really common use of this um, of this grammar form is in making sentences like this. When I was young. So um, this is a very useful little expression to know when talking about your life and your experiences. The verb to be young is orida. Orida means to be young. And when it conjugates, you go o oryoser te. O yos o yo. This is the past tense. Oryoser te is er te in the past tense. So oryoser te means when I was young. Okay, so how is that used in a sentence? Let's look at this first one. Okay, so we have another little grammar form in here that's you kind of it's important to understand. I'm just gonna highlight it. This nun got form. Does anyone um know how this works? So we have the verb kada. Kada is to go. Does anyone know what kanan got means in Korean? If you were to translate that just by itself, does anyone know what kanan got is? <clears throat> it uses the verb kada plus nun got, which is a grammar form that was taught in level one, making a verb into a noun. Yes, that is exactly what is going on. So, Rian, yeah, perfect. This means going. It turns the verb to go into the noun going. This is a verb. This is a noun. Another example, if we have something like 먹다, is to eat, right? 먹는 것 means eating. 
<laughs> Rian, yeah, awesome. Get, uh, good job. So this is what this got form does. It makes it into this, the verbs into their noun forms. So, 어렸을 때 한, 학교에 가는 것을 좋아했어요. 어렸을 때 we know means when I was young. So when I was young, 학교에 가다. Gerund, yes. In English, these are called gerunds. Uh, and ningot in Korean is how you make gerunds in Korean. Um, yeah, if you know stuff about English grammar, you know about gerunds. This ningot is how you make gerunds in Korean. And it's used for the same purpose as well. Um, okay, so hakyoe kanungot means going to school. Going to school. Hakyoe kanungot. Er, chua hesoyo. I had to take a work call and now I'm lost. Oh, I'm sorry. Um, we were just talking about nungot, which is another grammar form um, that was taught in the past. But um, when I was young, got going, got going, going, hakyoe, to school, chuahesoyo, liked. Chuahada in the dictionary form means to like. And this is in the past tense. It's the past tense form of chuahada. So I liked it in the past. When I was young, I liked going to school. Yeah, when I was young, I liked going to school. You could change this to I dislike going to school by just changing this final verb to like should all his so. I hated. With the same sentence, you can say I hated going to school when I was young. Um, depends what camp you're in. Maybe you loved school as a kid. Maybe you hated school as a kid. But just by changing that final verb, you can say those two things. Okay. So, nungo after a verb adds ing. Yes, correct. Mm -hmm. See becomes seeing. Eat becomes eating. Um, that sort of thing. Um, what about what about this one? 어렸을 때 야채를 못 먹었어요. Does anyone know what 야채 means in Korean? 야채. Yache. It's a type of food. Vegetables. King raffin. Yeah. Yache is vegetables. There's another word, teso, as well, which can also be used to mean vegetables. They're both, you can use either, eat both are fine. Here we've used yache, vegetables. What about this mot? Does anyone know what mot does in a sentence? It's a grammar form. Very common grammar form. Um, and it's used to do a certain purpose in a sentence. Does anyone know? Can't, not, yeah, perfect. So this mot, when you place it before a verb, it means that you can't do some verb or like you just, you can't, you are not able to, or you don't want to, that kind of thing. So this is, when I was young, vegetables, I couldn't eat. Mokta is the verb to eat. The past tense is here because we're talking about the past. In the past, vegetables, I couldn't eat. I couldn't eat vegetables when I was a kid. Or I just, I didn't like eating vegetables when I was a kid. Or I refused to eat vegetables when I was a kid. Something like that. That is some examples of using oriosute in sentences. Okay, so now we have a little table here. Now, uh, we haven't done it in this live stream, but in a previous, in a previous section of the book, we learnt about ermion. And we learnt that ermion in means if or when. So then what's the difference between ermion and ertes? Because erte can also mean when. If, when, when. And the main difference is there's not a huge amount of difference. Um, Umyeon and urte are very commonly interchangeable. Uh, in most cases, you can use either. But there are some slight differences. So urte focuses on the time. It's a bit more concrete. 
and Ermion focuses on the hypothetical situation. So Ermion generally is slightly less concrete feeling, slightly more, you know, suppositional if something happens. But it can be used a lot of the time to mean when as well, depending on context. So for example, Shigani isurte tago ilgoya. This is using isurte, the urte form. When I have time, I read a book. Specifically, at the time when I have when I am free, when I have time, that is when I read a book. Versus Shigani isumyan tago ilgoya. If I have time, I read a book. In English, it's basically the same, right? When I have time, I read a book. And if I have time, I read a book. It's basically the same. Same in Korean. It's basically the same. There's not a big difference between these sentences. This is slightly more hypothetical feeling, but it's essentially saying the same thing. So when it comes to using these two forms, generally you can kind of pick either. Uh, the other thing to know is that the more specific the situation is, the more specific it is, the more natural it is to use er te. Whereas, the more vague the situation is, the more natural it is to use er myon. For example, we have Ider temune, il temune, stress or mani, padas, te, child chaji mute. So this is saying, because of work, il temune, when I get a lot of stress, I can't sleep very well. So I'm just going to quickly say what's going on here. So because of work, when I'm really stressed, I can't sleep. Now this is a slightly more specific situation because you're talking about with related to work. Whereas you can say, if you're just saying, just in general, like when I'm stressed, not necessarily specifically to any due purpose, but if I'm just stressed in general, maybe you use ermion. But again, it's basically the same sentence. You can really kind of use either one. This book is Conversational Korean Grammar. So basically, this you don't have to get too hung up on the differences. Um, just know that they're pretty similar. Okay. Um, now we have some practice exercises just to finish up this chapter and then I'll finish the live stream as well. Um, yeah, no worries. So final questions just to finish us up. We have, um, I'll try and hide these answers down here. <laughs> yeah, you're welcome. Okay, so let's look at these, work out these sentences together. When I cook, I listen to music. That's certainly true for me. I always put music on when I cook. So how would we say this using te? First question is... <laughs> oh boy, seven always with you. Yes, amazing, beautiful. Um, so what first question is, what is the verb to cook? Anyone know what the verb to cook is in Korean? And you're, so you can cheat if you want and look at seven always with you's answer. Uh, the verb to cook. Yori hada, perfect King Raffin. Yori hada is the verb to cook. So to turn it into urte, we add urte and ha ends on a vowel sound. So the lil goes on the bottom and we add our te. When I cook, I listen to music. And also you can put chon in here if you want. I left it out, but you can include it if you would like. Turn in. Yori harte. What is music? Music in Korean. Anyone know what music is? The word for music. <clears throat> what keyboard do you use in Hangul? I use the default one, just in my phone. Umak. Yeah, saf mitten. Perfect. Umak. Er. Yo. Now again, remember that this verb tita is a irregular verb and it becomes yo when you conjugate it into the present tense. Oh, norehada. Yeah, that would be like I listen to nore, I listen to songs. You could also do that too. Norehate, nore der tiroyo. I listen to songs. <clears throat> okay. What about this next one? During lunch, 
I go to the gym. Where are you from? I'm originally from New Zealand. Okay, so first word to put in is this word for lunch. Does anyone know what the word for lunch is? We had it earlier in this live stream, but I'm not sure if um, you remember or were here for it. Does anyone know Jomshim? Yeah. Jomshim. And again, you can put Chon in here if you like. It's not required, but you can. And um, now because this is a noun, it's a noun, so we just add te right after the noun. Jomshim te. During lunch or when I have lunch, I go to the gym. Jomshim te. Does anyone know the word for gym in Korean? Actually, it's kind of a hard word to spell. I'm just going to write it. Ha sujang. Ha sujang is gym in Korean. It's literally the combination of the word health. Cheyukwan. Cheyukwan is also fine. That it's like gymnasium. Um, so Cheyukwan was like, if you go to a, like a school, it'll be like they'll have their school Cheyukwan, like the gymnasium for the school. Um, the gym where you go to work out, you could be either, but um, I'm going to use health to jung. But it's a combination of the word health and jung, which means place. So it's literally like health place in Korean, but health to jung means gym. And to go to a place, e kada. So it becomes e kayo in the present tense. This is the cover of the book. Feel free to take a screenshot if you would like. Oh my gosh, there's a bug in my drink. Ah! Wait, hang on, I need to try and get him out. <laughs> One second. Hang on, come out. I got him. Okay, see? There's a little bug in my drink. It's gone. I got him. Anyway, that's the, the book cover. And um, yeah, you can find it online. It's available on Amazon and uh, other places as well. This is very handy to get your copy, guys. <laughs> Thanks, Vince Joseph. I appreciate the endorsement. Um, yeah, I think it's a pretty good book too. Okay, and the last one here. When I was young, I didn't like veggies. Okay, when I was young. It's a bit of a long one, so I'm just going to write it out. Oh, Dios, er, te. And again, it's a combination of orida, to be young, with the past tense and erte. So there's kind of three things going on, but you can combine it all together and treat it as one sort of expression, orio sorte, when I was young. I'm so glad I stumbled across your life. I'm learning so much. Yay, I'm so glad. Um, oh, also, a little side note, a really also common way to do it. This is not answering the question, but just a side note. It's really common to put buto after it, and this is a little expression that means ever since I was young. So this is also a very handy expression to know, to talk about like, you know, I've lived in America ever since I was young, or I've enjoyed piano ever since I was young. If you use buta on the end, it means ever since that time. Anyway, just a little side note. How long did it take for you to learn this much? About five years. About five years. When I was young, I didn't like veggies. Now, there's a couple of different ways that we could write this. Yeah, perfect. That's, oh, careful with that. So this is a really common mistake. And it's not just against you. Like, everyone does this, and I totally understand. Um, so there's two verbs, right? Shita, and there's shiro, oh, hada. So this shita is an adjective, a descriptive verb, and this is an action verb, a tongsa. Meaning that with this verb, you use the e ka subject particle. And with this verb, you use the e object particle. So um, the same with chuayo and an and Chuayo and chuaheo as well. So if you're saying shilta, you use ika, and if you're using shirohada, you use olo. I'm so lost. Yeah, I know. It's really confusing. Especially like because they're so similar, but then you've got to change the, the particle. Um, and honestly, if you say, uh, 
you know, yachay do shiroi osu. Everyone would understand you. Like, everyone would have no problem understanding you. It's just one of those little, like, grammar things. Um, but it's really helpful to know. It's the same with, like, yeah. So if you'd say, like, um, yachay do shiroi hesoyo is correct. And ya che ga shiroso is correct. Either one of those two is correct. Anyway, but let's do that. Oriasu te. Since uh, you very kindly and correctly made this ya che, ya che ga. Shiros o yo. Shiroso. Shilta is to dislike something. The shilta. You've probably heard in dramas people saying like shiro. Shiro. It's like, I don't want to. I don't like it. You know, stop it. Whatever. Shiro. This is just the past tense conjugation in like polite language. Shiroso is I don't, didn't like it. And yache is vegetables. Oriosute yache ga shiroso. When I was young, I didn't like veggies. There's always multiple ways to translate these guys. There's never like just one answer. Um, but this is one possible answer that you could use. You could also say like, un chuaso, like they weren't good. You could also say that, you know, uh, lots of things you can do. Okay. But that brings us to the end of the live stream. Uh, we've spent uh, this time going through chapter, the first episode or first lesson in chapter three, which was Urte. We looked at how to conjugate these, uh, this grammar form into different verbs. We looked at the past tense and the future tense. We also briefly compared it to Urmion. And we did some practice exercises as well. So yeah, that brings us to the end, and um, next time I will do a little bit more. This is the name of the book, Conversational Korean Grammar. This is the cover page designed by our wonderful Eugen. Super helpful, super helpful, thank you. Thank you so much, thank you all for joining. I appreciate all of you coming and taking time out of your time, out of your day to um, uh, to be here. I really appreciate that. Um, and yeah, thank you guys so much. I always have fun doing this live streams, so it's cool to have everyone here and um, learn some Korean together.